to our very first talk of the day. And this is where we're super excited to have Aya Miyaguchi, who is the Executive Director of the Ethereum Foundation. And she'll be giving us a big overview of how we can discover what else is possible with Ethereum. And without further ado, I'd like to welcome Aya to uh, give her our very first talk of the day and uh, hope you enjoy the rest of the summit. Okay, let me Okay, <laughs> sorry, it took a bit. Thank you, Karik, for the introduction. I feel honored to be the first speaker of the summit and we really appreciate um, the work that East Global has put together to make this event accessible to hackers, thinkers, and influencers globally. East Global has done an amazing job over the last couple of years, expanding the Ethereum ecosystem to new places. It has been incredible to watch how their newly established monthly hackathons have connected builders around the world this year and we are proud to support their work. With that, I wanted to talk today about not just how we can continue to expand our community, but also about to expand Ethereum's opportunity in the regions where it can be most, most impactful. As you know, and uh, like just Karik just explained how amazing this year has been, the state of Ethereum is strong. Ethereum celebrated its five-year anniversary and the block number exceeded 10 million. These two phases are making progress, including the phase 1.4 for the merger of E2 and, uh, sorry, E2 and uh, 1 and 2. Multiple layer 2 solutions have been implemented to provide scalability. And with all these, along with other technical advancements, the community is realizing new solutions with Ethereum that bring real-world adoption that we hear about every day. I often use the analogy of EF being like a parent of Ethereum. I'm not talking about giving birth, but in the way we want to provide support. We are happy that Ethereum is growing and we want to let the organic growth happen as much as possible. Our mission is to ensure the success of Ethereum and to do so in a sustainable manner. We also definitely care about the right kind of growth and healthy growth. Without health, no systems, no community, no human can survive long-term. As parents prioritize and make trade-offs to nurture and support the family, so too does the EF. Today, I want to talk about one of the priorities that I cannot emphasize enough. It is to continue working to discover opportunities in emerging economies. I often tell my team to expand the definition of the Ethereum community. By this, what I mean is that we must expand our targets and the types of opportunities where Ethereum can create the biggest impact, which I believe is in emerging economies and I will share my reasons why. About 10 years ago, I became an MBA student. That was sort of an, an unexpected accident, but I met one great teacher who taught me about all the problems with centralized power in the business world and about problems, problems with capitalism. I learned that in order for a business to succeed long-term, you need to think about three pillars. Economic factors impact the growth of society, but we should also look at both social and environmental problems in building a business. At the end of the day, if your country or this planet becomes unlivable because of social or environmental issues, Succeeding with your business or making money means nothing. This should be easier to understand now looking at what's happening in the world. 
I've also learned that businesses with those three pillars can create more impact and opportunities in emerging economies. In 1976, Muhammad Yunus found that lending a small portion of money to the poor would make a significant difference in their life. He lent 27 US dollar mark to different women in poverty in a rural village in Bangladesh and learned each loan can earn two cents profit. This later became known as microfinance and he and his Grameen Bank received the Nobel Peace Prize. I myself went to Bangladesh and joined a field trip of BRAC, the biggest NGO in the world and another micro, big microfinance operator. I joined their team to watch a program targeting the ultra poor. 99% of the time, the poorest of women because they have to take care of babies without fathers often. Supporting these women to help them learn the simple knowledge for them to run a small business would create a huge economic benefit, not only to those women, but also to their viewers and to their country. I watched and saw how simple systemic changes were able to create business opportunities and economic growth. There is a lot we can learn from the way we distra way distractions happen in emerging economies. I will repeat this part, but this is not for charity. These are business opportunities. Now the stats are showing as proof that companies that perform well in ESG factors show better performance in their return on investment. So investors are paying more attention to emerging economies. So what does this mean for Ethereum and why we are making this our priority? Like I said before, Ethereum is succeeding and the technology is growing thanks to all of your work. Now it is time to think about who will be the next big users. Out of 400,000 babies born every day, 360,000 babies are born in emerging and developing countries. These simple numbers show us something. Also, I just happened to watch Chain Analysis webinar this week, and they showed a map of crypto P2P transactions and this chart of ranking of crypto adoption in, in, in each country. It shows the areas with, with biggest crypto adoption index are in Eastern Europe and other emerging economies. Do you know why the numbers are big there? My next reason for this priority explains why. So Ethereum has huge potential to make systemic changes in the world, but making systemic changes is not an easy job. With this, we need to look at regions where changes are absolutely necessary. People adopt new changes quickly when they are really needed, like when something like life or death. We all saw that this year with COVID and other challenges. It reminds me of one of my favorite inspiring stories from Vincent Casares of Dapo. When he was selling Bitcoin on the street of Argentina in the early stage of crypto before Ethereum, an old man asked to buy a lot of Bitcoin with all the money he had. Vincent said, hey, old man, this tech is still experimental, so you may not want to put all your money into it. And the man said, I lost everything twice, believing in our country's currency, so investing into this is nothing. Winces decided to start his company's Apple after this. Here is a map that shows us a few challenges that we have huge opportunities to solve and there are some examples of solutions already provided by blockchain. You may have read the World Economic Forum's case study in Colombia for the e-procurement system built on Ethereum. And for this challenge in Sub-Saharan Africa, another community member, EtherRisk, is providing a solution to this huge challenge and opportunity. 
EtherRisk is solving one of the most challenging issues facing farmers globally. Revenue loss from unpredictable weather that destroys crop output. The solution is smart contract driven weather index insurance. Out of 48 million smallholder farmers in sub Saharan Africa, only 3% are insured. I have advised small businesses and entrepreneurs, and I'm aware that micro insurance is often even harder than micro lending due to the cost of providers to operate. Ether risk solution could serve 14 billion USD market in sub Saharan Africa alone. Also, what Mohammed Yunus discovered was not just a way to save poor people, he established a serious business model just by disrupting the established loan system. Now, the market size of microfinance is 7.2 billion only in Bangladesh. If you understand what Ethereum can do, there is already a huge opportunity for Ethereum to disrupt what he disrupted to build microfinance 3.0. Problem with microfinance still exists. Too many middlemen with high overhead costs are still making the system not entirely fair to those entrepreneurs who are lending. The problem isn't necessarily that the lenders are being evil, but rather just the structure of the system is not efficient or effective. Globally, this market is 124 billion. As you can see, this is an opportunity for the entire community, including builders, entrepreneurs, investors, to make an impact here. Lastly, I want to update you all on what the Ethereum Foundation is doing to make this a priority. We have started local grants program that is providing grants to targeted and un under supported regions with high potential to support those builders and new communities. You might have heard about our community members in Honduras who helped this effort as the first group. We are continuously working with the UNICEF innovation team through the crypto fund to support blockchain startups in emerging economies as well. The second round of investment supported by EF invested 125 ETH in eight different startups in seven countries. Guatemala, India, Argentina, Turkey, Mexico, Cambodia, and Chile. We are also working with them on their GIGA project, which maps out and connects school with the internet. After schools are mapped, mapped out, Ethereum can help with the payments to providers and a lot more. We are also working on a new EF fellowship program to work with change makers in regions that are more in need of systemic changes. The, the program is still at the piloting stage, but we will share our progress by the next DevCon. And speaking of DevCon, and speaking of DevCon, we are excited to say that DevCon 6 will take place between August 10th and August 13th of 2021. And we hope to see things continue to improve. Our team is working hard to make this DevCon the best, the most improved, and the most exciting one ever. And we hope to share more developments in the region soon. Thank you very much. And I hope to see you in Boda next year.